Hi guys, welcome to Gemma Bee Makes. I'm Gemma and this is my crafty channel where I talk about all the things that I've been making over the past couple of weeks. It's really nice to come and sit down and talk to you guys. Um, it's been two weeks since I last podcast, which is a big improvement on the three months of a gap that was last time. So I just want to uh, tell you all about what I've been making. This episode is a little bit of a catch up episode. So um, after my big <laughs> break, I showed you all the knitting things that I've been doing. I'm going to show you um, a little bit of, it's a bit sewing heavy um, today. So lots, still lots of knitting, crochet, spinning, uh, but lots of sewing. So grab yourself a cup of tea and uh, let's start, shall we? So I'm going to start, I have no finished objects. Do I have finished objects? No, because I started everything new this, uh, this time. So, um, I'm going to show you what you've seen before. So kept in my uh, Mrs. Brown's bag is a little sock project that I've been working on. So this is my hand spun yarn. So the braid was uh, Slothy Creations in the cowboy colourway. Now I've already made a pair of socks out of this and I wanted to be able to use every last little scrap. So what I've done is I knit a whole tube, I think it's 64 stitches, um, and I've knit all the rest of my, my hand spun yarn, and I've just started to put a toe on the end. So I'm gonna put a toe on this end, I'm going to pick up stitches and put a toe on this end, and then measure into the middle and cut it. Then I can put two, a cuff on each side, and then I'll be able to cut in a heel. So they are going to be like quite a shorty sock. Um, I'm using a mini that I had, which I, I thought had like quite a few of the colours. So it's got some of the blue and some of the yellow. And this is from uh, the Yarn Lab. So this is a very deep stash little mini that I had. And it was from a Buffy collection. And I think this might be Willow. It might be Xander. I can't remember um, but yeah I thought it went quite well so I'm looking forward to them you can actually see in my knitting um, how my tension changes depends on what I'm doing it's really tight up here I was a little bit sweaty <laughs> it's really loose here where I must have just been super chilled yeah it's, it's weird isn't it how your tension changes I think that's something that I need to practice um, is how to keep the same tension from picking up projects from time to time. It's definitely um, noticeable in this. Then again, it is hand spun, so maybe the weight of the yarn changes throughout. No, I don't. It's, it's kind of consistent. It's my name. <laughs> uh, but I've really enjoyed doing this, and obviously, it's just a round and round on a magic loop on a 2.5 needle. This is a chow goo needle, which I prefer so yeah so that's my first little project and hopefully I should have an, a pair of socks by uh, next week it should be fun to be able to cut my knitting I've never knit a sock tube before um, but I have done an afterthought heel so I uh, the thought of cutting into the knitting is more exciting rather than nerve-wracking so that's that's a fun little project that I've been doing I've also been knitting on a new sweater so inside my fiber fox bag i love this bag um is stripes by andrea maori now i want to say a huge huge big thank you to valerie thank you so much valerie so after uh, my indecision of in my last podcast valerie super kindly sent me the pattern for Stripes by Andrea Maori and I think that just was my ultimate decider and I cast it on straight away so a really huge big thank you you really made my day it was lovely lovely gesture so again using my own hand spun is the very beginnings of a stripe setter so it's a very small cable that I've got it on so it's not gonna um, lots of jiggling but yeah how nice are the colors I'm so impressed 
so those that have been here quite a while will know that I spun all these different colours after going to a day out at Harewood House. I went to my local, it was a big um, like stately home, I think it was visited a lot by Queen Victoria, no, <laughs> Mary, Queen Mary, I don't know, it was one, it's, it's a royal stately home and it's got a wonderful like uh, big gardens, it's got the lakes and it's got um, an aviary, if very aviary it's got lots of birds um and a little bit of a zoo and a big adventure playground it's a really nice day out if you're ever around leeds uh harewood house harwood house um in fact i think they visited it on uh, downton abbey has anybody watched downton um anyway beside the point they had a crowned crane i'm gonna put a picture of the crane because i do every time um and he just inspired me so i chose colors to match and i have started knitting stripes by andrea maori um i think i chose maybe a size a little too big uh, but i really did just want an oversized jumper so i'm hoping for a big baggy jumper um i don't know how i'm gonna do with yarn amounts i think i might have to do a short sleeve but we'll see when it comes to it i'm gonna um i'm gonna knit the bo body and uh, see what we've got left for the sleeves but I'm I think there might be shorties in fact I might purposely do a short sleeve like a three quarter up to here um like a nice tight fitting one um, I'm not quite sure I haven't got to the part of the pattern where it tells you what the sleeves do but I think I'm I'm going to do a short sleeve anyway thank you Valerie I love it <laughs> really really enjoying it um so I don't know if you can see the increases on the um, around the yoke kind of make the pattern wave, you know, the jumper wave around the top part here. So it's got like a where the increase are. Um, my other Andrea Maori that I knit recently, uh, the shifty did the same, which blocked out a little bit, but it's still it's a little bit wavy. And a lot of the projects that I had a little look on Ravelry. And it does seem like that's the pattern, that's how the increases are. So I think it just needs an extra squidgy block to try and get those uh, those waves out. But we'll see how it happens as it goes along. I've got to the point where I'm on the body now. What have I got there? I think each colour is just over an inch. So there's uh, now I'm just on a, on a round and round and round. But yeah, really enjoyable. Thank you so much. Uh, for making up my mind and making the decision for me because it was really hard. I couldn't do it <laughs> But yeah, so that's um, My other knitting project that I've been working on So two two knitting projects uh, one of them is nearly finished I, I do need to have a little cast on party because I'm not working on anything else. So um, But I have been working on some crochet so I want to show you this, this giant tote. Have I like big balls? <laughs> My sister-in-law got me that for Christmas a couple of years ago, I think. Um, so I'm sure I'm gonna pull this one out. I don't know if you guys remember my long-term lovelies. Um, this was, oh my gosh, it's a bit of a hand-spun uh, hand -spun episode. Everything's hand-spun today. Um, but this was, all my first um, hand spun tries and I, I crocheted the mystery crochet along by uh, the crochet project and this was called the stash of shells and it's absolutely massive I think it's about eight foot it's about eight foot long um, huge huge big scarf now when I made this um, it said to put the most comfiest or I can't remember what it was the, you, the, the most prominent colour in the middle because that's the part that's going to be around your neck when you put it on that's going to be around your neck and um, at the time this hand spun was something we dyed with a local guild from Coastal Colours and it's camel silk alpaca and something else really like luxurious it's really nice and it's itchy as hell it has got something in it that is like, oh, 
clawing and I've never worn it. I've worn it once and I'm like, oh, I can't wear that. It's horrible. It's really not nice around your neck. Um, but it's such a shame. So it's got all my like crazy lumpy bumpy hand spun. Um, but I, it's just kind of been sat in a drawer ever since. So my idea, because I've got this big giant ball bag of uh, <laughs> ball bag of hand spun scraps. So from leftover jumpers. So I, I decided I was going to make another stash of shells shawl. Well, big scarf. I'm going to try and get it to the same length and crochet them together and I want to make three of them and hopefully because it's about eight foot long um, I'm just going to keep doing that until it's blanket sized um, so this is a very long term project that I've kind of so oh, what's this <laughs> oh these are Edward and James's little bits of weaving that we've been playing with so that's why that's in there um, but yeah these are lots and lots of greens there's some reds in there there's leftovers from jumpers and shifties and uh what was that that one some some really early squishies that's really squishy uh yeah absolutely loads of different colors well a big giant bag of hand spun that i've already used in different projects it's all leftovers um so that's what i'm going to keep doing this is my big long-term project i'm like I said, it's the stash of shells by the Crochet Project and I'm just going to keep making them and the wappy, crazy colours all going to go in super scrappy <clears throat> and then crochet them together. So you can see how thick, yeah, they're very thick and thin. So this big red like fruit salad colour, I remember doing that fruit salad, um, is a lot thicker than this blue that's at the side. really don't care. This yellow, the yellow one here was my first ever hand spun on a spindle it was the first time that i actually tried and practiced anything i think it's this i just it was just sat in a bag look at these lumpy clumpy bits like all that texture it's no good sat in a bag is it and um yeah i hadn't crocheted anything in a while in fact the crochet project have just announced that is my phone sorry guys one sec uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the Crochet Project. They are releasing a new MCAL, a new mystery crochet along, I think in about a month's time with a few little hints and I think there's some kits coming out. I'm not quite sure who they buy. It might be Fibre Spits. I'll have to have a little look. Um, but I think it requires two, two skeins of um, fingering weight yarn with a high contrast. So I think... Um, I think I might have that in my stash somewhere, but I'll have to have a little look and see what the uh, the kits look like first. But I love the mystery crochet alongs by the Crochet Project. They are super fun, super enjoyable, and um, they always turn out something nice. There's only one. There's only been one that I've not finished. I think I frogged it. I can't remember which one it was. That's a bit bad, isn't it? Oh, it's motifs. I don't like motifs. But uh, yeah, <laughs> um, and I didn't take part in the sock one. Crochet socks are not really my thing, but all the other ones have been super duper enjoyable. So like, that's all my knitting and my crochet. What else have we doing? Spinning, because I'm spinning forever now. So, excuse me, excuse me. So my spinning at the minute is this absolutely beautiful um, merino from Hilltop Cloud. This is in the honey colourway and I have done a traditional three ply. It goes with this one that is marzipan and oh I've got another bobbin of I believe it's called Marrakesh I think it's yeah Marrakesh and what have we got what's the third one fourth one with 
Prophets on and Leaves in it. Oh my god, what is that? Uh, this is Coco. So I haven't spun this one yet, but it's 14.5 micron. My goodness. Where have those leaves come from? Um, it's really, really nice. And I've got a little second bobbin on there. So they're just 50 gram bumps um, split into three. So they're giving me quite little um, little bobbins. And they're just a little tiny skein. I'm not quite sure on the yardage. I'm not quite sure. I haven't measured. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really enjoying doing that. It's the softest yarn I've ever spun. It's just lovely. So, so nice. Um, but yeah, I think, so I'm going to have four colours eventually and I'd like to make myself a nice four colour um, crescent shawl like an everyday shawl for uh, winter time looking forward to making that i think i might have a little uh dap hand uh, designing one maybe just for myself and then again i might decide to scour the internet for five weeks until uh, i can't decide anymore <laughs> so yep yeah, that's my spinning so that that's um that's being spun on my electric eel wheel nano this is the only little machine that i've been using at the minute this was the uh very first version um we got the kickstarter so it's tiny tiny um i went to go visit my lovely friend mel hey mel um and i was saying to her i only ever spinning really fine yarn at the minute um, super thin singles and it's simply because this little machine doesn't let you do anything else <laughs> it does maybe it would go slightly thicker but it it wants to spin uh, lace weight yarn um, so that's what I have been spinning I do have an Ashford traditional but my hips are not very good after having two children um, and the height of my sofa and the, the way it is really hurts to do the treadle. Um, I can't wait until we can all go meet up again in um, my guild and my weekly meetup with the Spinners of Air, which I'm part of, um, because I can actually get to sit on a proper chair on a proper hardwood floor and use my wheel again, because I haven't used it for so long, um, because they're the right height. So I, I'd love to use my wheel, but I haven't used it in such a while, because we haven't been able to meet up and I can't do it at home. So, um, but yeah, that's exciting. We should be able to meet up soon. I think we spoke to the museum, um, which is uh, Leeds Ind Industrial Museum, Armley Mills. Um, and the, uh, they think the end of June. So if the, uh, if the world op opens up again, as it's supposed to on the 21st of June, that's when we'll be able to meet up again. So we're all looking forward to that. Okay. <sighs> Big breath. Mm -hmm. So over the past, I'd say three months, I have been really enjoying um, doing some sewing. I've been doing some hand stitching. I've been using my spinning wheel, no, my sewing machine. And um, I've been uh, making myself some clubs. <laughs> So um, I do have a finished object, it is what I'm wearing. So I am wearing the Zadie Jumpsuit by Paper Theory. It is my first time um, making a jumpsuit. I'm going to pop a little clip of me prancing around um, here at the minute. So this is a material that I picked up from my local market, Leeds Market. On the outside, um, I think the guy turns up like once a week, I'm not quite sure, I think it's Tuesdays. Um, and this material is one pound a meter so it is definitely um, uh, for making a twirl so this is my practice my practice um, jumpsuit there's a few little tweaks that I'd like to make I think I can probably downsize I think I've made um, a size a little bit too big um, but actually it's really kind of comfortable maybe I can keep it this size I don't think I've quite sewn where the tie goes in properly so I'd like to be able to move that. It's the first time using like a bias binding to do um, a neckline, which I really quite enjoyed. I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it was. So that was quite good. Um, but yeah, so I've got this 
this fabric for the next one um, which is like a really thin not thin it's like super soft super drapey I think it's a poly cotton um, I don't really know materials it's not um, but it's not quite see-through maybe no it's not it's no it's not um, but yes um, I'm looking forward to this one so my local uh, village has a place called the School of Sew. Now my very original people will know the School of Sew is where I learned to sew. So I did their very original uh, beginners course, I think it was over six weeks, and I learned how to make a tilly in the buttons. Um, I can't remember what dress it was. It was a dress and it was lined and it we ta got taught how to fit and it was a brilliant course. I really, really recommend it to anybody. If, you, if you're you wanting to learn how to sew, see if you can find a local class because it's absolutely brilliant. Um, but because the world is opening up again, they have started doing, they, they're doing their usual classes, but they've also started doing um, like a two hour session where you, you can pay and go, take your own, Take your own project and they will help you with it if you need help so i think what i'm going to do is um me and my friend kirsty have booked are going to book ourselves onto one of these courses um excuse me one of these uh afternoon uh two hour sessions and i think i'm probably going to wear my jumpsuit and help them get me to then change the pattern of how i can get it to fit myself properly are better anyway that is my plan because I, I don't quite know what I'm doing I, I'd quite like I think my the crotch on it is too far down is too far low I'd quite like it raising up a little bit but I really don't know how to do that um, I spoke to one of my spinner friends who also likes to sew and she was saying you can lengthen it or shorten it at the at the back and I was like well it's in two pieces oh it confused me. I don't know how to do it. I'm going to go ask the lovely ladies at school or so, but I'm very excited about um, this one has actually got a little bit more stretch in it as well. So I think we all know the downsides of jumpsuits is when you go to the bathroom because <laughs> it's all got to come down. Now this material is very solid woven and it doesn't quite give as much when you want it to get out of it. Whereas this is, uh, it's got a little bit of stretch. It's got a little bit of give and I think it'll just be a <laughs> oh my goodness, I feel like I'm rushing today. I, this Today, I don't have to rush. Both boys are at school, David's actually upstairs working, he's at home, but I don't have to rush and I'm like powering through. Hmm. Anyway, I've also been doing um, some sewing on a coat. So, Again, I will insert a little video here of me modeling my work in progress. So this is the Kelly Anorak by Closet Core Patterns. It is obviously not quite finished, but it, it's got to the point now where um, this is the second time I've made this coat and it's got to the point now where it's the tricky bits and it is a winter coat and we are getting to the point where it's getting warm and I'm not going to need this winter coat so I'm actually going to put this project away um, at this stage um, and get it out at September time and finish it then uh, because it's it's um, sitting in the corner at the minute and it's uh, it keeps looking at me um, and I want to do other things and I feel really guilty that it's sat there not finished I do not need a winter coat right now, but the progress that I've made on it, I really wanted to show you because I'm really, really happy with it. And as soon as I get this coat and I get to be able to finish it, I'm going to be really super chuffed. So I'm going to, you've seen me prance around in a little bit, that's, that's, it. but this is, this is the hood. I'll see if I can get you, um, so the material that I've chosen, um, again, I don't know what materials are. I really should make a point of writing them down when I buy them because I don't know what it is. This is a waterproof, well, it's a shower proof uh, material, but it kind of feels mole skinny, like mole skinny. That is not a word, but it feel, it's like kind of got a soft 
peach fuzz to it. Um, it's super soft, but it's waterproof. It's really, really nice. Um, it's super thin. It's like a, a super, Quite, it's quite a thin material, if you can see that there, with, it, with the frizz. Um, and then the lining on the inside is uh, a Liberty Tan Alone. It's a lawn cotton. Tan -a cotton? I don't know material. <laughs> oh my goodness, I nearly need to learn how to do this. Um, but I have quilted it with um, a polyester batting. So it should be super duper warm um, and it is really, really warm. So you just saw me trying it on. Um, it, this is the second time I've made this coat. I've made um, the coat that I've worn and I've worn it every single day. It's been my everyday coat for about a year now. Um, and I've made the same size. Now, I didn't really think about the fact that I was putting a whole another quilting layer on the inside so it is a little snug um especially around the hips i've got bigger hips uh, but it still fits and it's still comfy it's going to be really really warm um and i'm really really proud of everything that i've done but i like i say <laughs> you probably sat there going Gemma, all you have to do is attach the hood hem it a little bit why don't you just finish it and that is what I've been telling myself for the past like month now. Gemma just put the hood on, hem it a little bit, but it's not just hemming it and putting the hood on. They are the tricky little bits that, that have to be done precisely and have to be done carefully. Um, and they're the bits that I messed up on my old coat and I think it's just got me a little bit nervous. I might take it to another session at School of Saw. I didn't think of that. Oh, I might do that instead of putting it away. So I think I don't need it yet. It's a winter coat. I don't need it yet. So my point was, I think I'll just put it away till like September time when I'm going to need when it's when the weather starts to get colder and I can finish it then and have a brand new coat and it'll be like a, a new project. Whereas at the minute, it's just making me feel guilty because I actually want to sew other things like jumpsuits and and little things that I'll show you now. <laughs> so that's a good idea. I might do that. I might go out with Kirsty and go, do a couple of these sessions at the School of Saw and, uh, and finish off. We'll see. I'll have to think about it and see what I want to do. Um, so yes, so, okay, so another long-term project that I've been working on for quite a while is um, this, oh my goodness, come on, up you come. <laughs> this quilt top of all Edward and James's baby clothes. So again, I'm gonna do a little video um, of me inside. And as you can see, it's actually really quite big now. So the last time I showed this, it was all in little tiny motifs while it was in the flowers. Um, but I've managed to put them all together and do all the pieces in between. It's got to the point now where I, um, I'm just filling in the edges so I've got some more pieces to go I'm going to do a border round round the edge of in a in a lighter color and then I'm going to do another border around it again um in a darker color I've got lots of blues I've got lots of this this one left um lots of this blue I think there's some more of the elephants um, but yes, the darker colours and I'm going to do it. So a border in white and a border in the darker colour. And then I, <clears throat> I don't know what I'm going to do about quilting it. So Edward really, really wants to be able to put this on his bed. It's really, really soft. Well, it's baby clothes. So it's all the, and it's been washed over and over again. You know, Edward and James both wore the clothes. So they're super duper soft. Um, Edward still has, he, he's eight now, but he still has both of his blankets that he had as a, as a baby. Um, and he still carries them everywhere, every night. He, they, they are in bed with him every night and they, they he cuddles them all the time. Um, <clears throat> and my local fabric shop sells the same material. I think it's just called Minky. 
So, but they sell the same material that his blankets were uh, made out of and it's like a cream colour and it's got little raised bumps, little raised dots. I'm sure it's called Minky. Um, so I was thinking I might get some of the Minky and back it with that. I'm, I'm not going to be able to quilt it like a, a more traditional quilt. Um, because Edward wants to be able to snuggle it. So I'm going to put a backing on it of Minky and then obviously I'm going to have to be able to attach it somehow. So I'm going to have to do some sort of quilting, but I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. Um, I think we're going to have to get to it at the time, if you get what I mean. I'll have to think about it when it gets close to the time, but I've really enjoyed sitting down and doing the English paper piecing. So it's all English paper pieced, it's all hand sewn, um, it's been lovely to be able to go through all of the baby clothes and I don't feel like I've thrown anything out now. I feel like I've got a really nice memory of all their little things and um, yeah, I don't just have hordes of baby clothes that I can't get rid of. <laughs> um, oh, my babies are growing up. Lots of lots of long-term projects that are all kind of getting to the point where they're either going to get put away, they're nearly finished, I'm really nearly done. Um, I've really been um, having a look through all the things that I have and all the things that I need and things that I would like for myself. I've realised I don't have any needle storage. I really would like a new place to keep all my needles. So I decided to design one. I, uh, I'm going to show my little uh, design. So I started off by thinking, well, I, I would like um, places to put needles and crochet hooks and little pockets and places for circular needles um, and all the things that I would like in a needle case. And then I kind of drawn it all out. Um, with all the dimensions and things in. Little places to put stitch markers, little places, you know the little keys that, um, the little metal keys to tighten your needles. So when you've got interchangeable needles, a little key that goes in, keeps it nice and tight. They're the things that I always lose. <laughs> always, they always disappear. So I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna see if I can make a little a little thing where maybe I can hand embroider it but it can just pop through so there's something that's always there so, uh, and maybe a, a sewing a needle or something um yeah and then three pages and then there's some big pockets for all my fixed circulars so that's the plan that was what I wanted to do and I had a couple of these fat quarter sets so this is one that I haven't used but it's by um, the craft cotton and I picked these up in John Lewis so you get four fat quarters and I really liked these colours and this is the second one so it's all kind of blues and pinks I don't really want to open it all out but I've cut out all my pieces so that's yeah so it's this um, and that colour and some pink and some dark so all the pieces are there ready to cut out my very own needle storage See if it works. I quite like to put a zip in at the back. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying doing that. So it's been really nice to sit down and think of um, think of new things. It's not new things. There's lots and lots of needle storage and needle cases around there. But there's always something that's missing for, for me personally. I think, oh, there's always somewhere you can put your needles, but where do you put your wires? Or there's always somewhere you can put your wires, but where do you put your notions? Or the little end caps, or you know, I just want I want it to be able to be have it all in one place. At the minute, I think all my needles and all my crochet hooks and all my um, wires they're all in like three different places. I've got like a box, I've got a little pencil case, and I've got um, a needle storage that I kind of bought off of Amazon. That's the biggest pile of crap I think I've ever bought. <laughs> Um, but hopefully I can combine all of those things into one place. So I'm really, really hoping that that works out. And if it looks nice and if it works out, 
I might make a few more and pop them on my Etsy. What do you think? Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm having fun. Yep, so that's everything that I've been doing. Um, I've really enjoyed um, getting back into all my crafts. It's really nice to have all this time to think about um, what it is that I enjoy, what what do I enjoy doing best? I've, I've realised that I'm really quite um, seasonal with my crafts. I really enjoy knitting um, in winter time. I enjoy sewing in the summer time. Um, I really like spinning in the spring. It's really weird how how uh, that goes. So, do you do you guys find that? Do you find that like you you have like that it goes with the seasons, or do you just are you, are you knitters non-stop all the time? You don't like to to do anything, just knitting non-stop. It'd be really interesting to find out though, if 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 it's everybody and not just me, or if it's not everybody, but you know, more people than I thought. Anyway, it's been really nice to catch up with you guys today. I have been talking for a very long time about lots of things, but I think I finally caught you up with everything that I've been doing over the past couple of months. So um, next time I see you guys, it will be what I've made over the past couple of weeks and um, We'll, we can keep it in that that little uh, that little bubble and it won't be so long and it won't be so long-winded maybe we'll see <laughs> it's been really nice catching up with you guys um and i'll see you all next time see you later bye